Radio. I'm Michael Horn, along with the star of our show, the Sultan of Safety, the All-Pro Defensive End, the acting legend, the man who last week predicted that the NBA playoffs were over and it was done. Cleveland would be the winner. I predicted after the third game. It's two to one. And I predicted. I'm sorry to bring that up. It's Fred Dreyer, everybody. Hey, listen, I, I go show. for the dramatic. I don't. Everybody I don't. Uh, I don't you. back out on my. Thanks. They still love you. They Thank still you, love you. Guys. Thank you so much. Sit okay. down in front. The people okay. behind you can't see. Okay, it's good. This yeah, was a great. What it, happened? Was a, it was a great six games. It was, wasn't it? it was a, the best team certainly did win. What happened? What turned it around for Golden State? Well, so Golden State just beat them with uh, with uh, a, a, a points off turnovers in the six game, certainly. But they, they outran them. They ran them into no. the ground. No. And, and there was a, a beautiful uh, exhibition of, no. uh, of uh, defense no. when it counted. Well, no. what, you're asking so, me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. They listened to your show. And after oh, you put them inspired. on the spot, <laughs> you inspired them to prove you wrong. You know, they didn't need me to say that. Because was, there, was, there, were, there were people there saying that uh, Le- this was the year LeBron was going to pull a miracle. And after three it games, like it, it sure as heck looked like it. I thought he performed beautifully as much as he could. You know, you can't go anywhere with, with Love on the bench and uh, Tyree Irving, you know, uh, you know, on the buffet line. You can't have those, you can't have those 40% of your team, your starting lineup, you know, missing these games. And, uh, and anyway, it, it was, uh, it was great. It was, it was a terrific, uh, showing. And, uh, this Steph Curry is just a magician. I'm telling you, I was so happy for his parents. They kept shooting uh, over to the crowd to, to see his, his mother and father. And they were eating hot dogs. That'd be a great as time of life. Yeah, great time of life. Wasn't it? It was yeah. a great time for them to see time. their kid. It's yeah, a you good bet deal. It is. It's great. That's and the fun stuff of sports I like to see. I hope, uh, I hope that I have a couple of people that are going to be free agents and are available to travel around. I hope, uh, they, uh, they, they keep the team intact and go do it again, you know? Yeah. It really looked good. They got together. Now on the show today, the great carbon policy is going to be yes. here. One of the, uh, the masterminds with the, uh, San Francisco 49ers later on the Cleveland Browns and putting together some incredible uh, deals and, uh, and plans. And he is now, trying to bring football to Southern California. Yep. And uh, he's going to tell you all about that. That's coming up at the half hour here, as I recall, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. And uh, also we have a couple of things that are very interesting Got to me. Got some big stories. Big some stories. very interesting things here, folks. I want you to get your pencils out and your and your, and your spiral notebook. If you have a... If you have do you, a should you li- listen to the show with a spiral notebook? I always do. I always make notes, whether it's a spiral or whether it's a blue book. Do you refer back to those notes after you make them? I keep them. Yeah. I do. I keep them. And, you do. I've seen they, your house. And they kind of show up in the laundry. Right next to the football you have up there, two safeties in one game. You actually have that football. You know, I don't have a, a memorabilia. You don't have much, but I that's a good one. That was great. The, that's a good one because uh, because of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, Don Hewitt, the equipment manager, he made that up for me. And he was, he was one of the best equipment managers in all of sports. But uh, the ball brings back memories of a great time and a great time in the league and a great time for me in L.A. here. Uh, but uh, there but was I'm, a spleen of one of the quarterbacks also in the yes, uh, in a jar. There well, you also. know, it's it's a uh, it's an one absolute it's an absolute uh, uh, trivia question that people can win a lot of money on, and that is, I had two safeties in one game against Green Bay on October twenty first, nineteen seventy three. Who were the two quarterbacks? Yeah, these are tough because people are going to stay like Bart Starr or something. Well, I'll answer it in the next segment. All right. Whoa, we got to make this way yeah. straight ahead. We continue. It is the PM Show on Sports Weekend Edition, the one and only Fred Dreyer. Follow Fred on Twitter. He's amazing. Fred underscore Dreyer. Follow him, and he's got great tweets for you. It's hot enough to fry an egg on a garbage can lid. You're watering your plants to help them survive, but don't stop there. They need miracle Grow to help them dazzle when it sizzles. A summer feeding makes roots stronger, so they resist summer stress better. Blooms last longer, too. Remember, don't just water your plants. They need to eat in the heat. Skip the fried eggs, but don't skip the summer feeding. miracle Grow. Life starts here. 
What are you doing? Looking for the best hotel value in America. That's easy. It's America's Best Value Inn. Really? Sure. They have over a thousand hotels across North America. Okay, that's good. They offer free Wi-Fi, continental breakfast at HBO at most locations. That's even better. And when you join their free value club, you get 15% off. Room upgrade and late checkout when available. You're right. America's Best Value Inn is the best hotel value in America. Book a room today at abvi.com. Done. PM show nationwide coast to coast TRN Digital Talk Radio. It's the weekend edition of the BM show on sports. I'm Michael Horn along with the star of our show, Fred Dreyer, who just before the break, we were talking about a, a, a possibly a record that it's going to be a long time coming and breaking it. Never can tell, but two safeties in one game. Of one player. At, of one player. Fred Dreyer had two safeties in one game, one player. Me. Did him twice. That was back in June. When was it? June. <laughs> Play football in June. Oh, I thought it was in the preseason. It's not well, when was it? What was it's the day? Hockey. What was the day? I can't remember. October 21st, October, 1973. 1973, October 21st. Yep. And uh, you, your question was, who were or who was the quarterback that you uh, knocked down twice on those safeties? There were two quarterbacks. There were two of them. There were two quarterbacks. And it's not Bart Starr. Each one was issued. Brett Favre. Each, each one was issued a safety by me. A safety. Yeah. The first one was Scott Hunter. Wow, there's a name. Alabama quarterback. Scott Hunter. That's right. Second one was, you'll never, ever guess this one. Really? A left-hander, Jim Del Gazo. Jim Del Gazo. Yeah. And when he Del Gazo on you all, he guy. went down O, didn't he? <laughs> a little squirmy guy. Boy, what was it like? You just knew you were getting that second one, didn't you? You just plowed right I knew in. I was getting both of them. You did. Yeah. It was, it was an interesting day. Sometimes you have these days where you have an epiphany, and it's a very interesting thing. You know, the, the, the beautiful aspect of looking back on careers and in, in, in certain in sports is that, is that there, there seems to be a connection between ESP, not ESPN, but extra sensory perception. Right. And the upcoming play. See, I knew you were going to say that on today's show. You did? I had this. This one of those days. I had that feeling. So seriously, are you right about this? You yes, I am. I am. I, you I, saw I am. the play, didn't Many you? Many times during my, you saw it. my illustrious uh, time running around out there, I, I envisioned it because you behave, you have play recognition. You, there's, there's body language, there's eyes, and there's looks, and, and there's, there's a sense right before the ball is gonna be snapped that you know what the play is gonna be. Really? Yes. So you, this is what I was talking about earlier when I said, how can a guy come up with a game on the line as a pinch hitter in the bottom of the ninth inning and get the hit with the crowd going nuts? Isn't it intense pressure? And Jay Johnstone, a great pinch hitter, said, hey, that's my job. This was your job. You, yes analyzed everything around you. You used all your senses to perceive what yeah. could be happening. That, that, that sport, makes you an incredible player. That sport, like boxing and hockey and all these other great sports, sports is played um, you know, with your eyes, ears, and nose, and a sense, and a perception, and a gut instinct. All these things are, are intensified when you play. There's the, okay, down in distance, they come out and split backs and they have them run trips right, trips left. And, uh, they have all these things that are factual. Uh, and, you know, when they're on the, when they're on, when they're coming into your 20 yard line, they like to run these plays with these people. You have to do a lot of memorization and you have to assign, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, what they've done in the past to what you think they're going to do, provided the down in distance and the personnel on the field. Right. But there's also what's also true that never gets talked about is that there is a there is an extra sensory element at play because of all of these large bodies. Right. To close together and and the tension that is between what they're trying to do to you and what you're trying to guess they're doing to you, how you're preparing. So there's lots of little giveaways like I used to watch. Uh, the offensive uh, huddle, and I would see them coming in, shuttle from the from the head coach or from the offensive coordinator, plays coming in, uh, guys coming in, and when they would come in, you could tell you could tell if it was if they were if they were going to be uh, 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 running a play or yeah. throwing it. How could you tell that? Because of how long the quarterback stayed in the huddle. 
it takes longer to call a pass play. Gotcha. It takes longer to assign a pass play with the little caveat that the quarterback may make. So what you do is I tried to find a place to look into the huddle to see the quarterback. Maybe I could see him. Maybe I couldn't. But oftentimes, I know in San Diego there was a time when uh, Dan Fouts looked over at Charlie Joyner and raised his eyes and looked at him. I knew it was going to be a pass. So by deducting what it was going to be, I watched where Charlie broke out of the huddle and how he went to his place, how he split out to the hash mark. Right. I watched him, even though I'm a defensive end. I watched him, and I looked at Fouts, and Fouts came up and looked at Charlie, just glanced at him, And I said, here it is. Here comes the flanker screen. Here it comes because the personnel was there. The down and distance was there. And I said, here it is. Thank you so much, Dan Fouts. (laughs) And so that we was stuffed it. that play for like about an 11 yard loss. Really? Yeah. And it was so exhilarating and so exciting. You know, you wonder why, how people see things on the field, you know, yeah. you know what's, what's the instinct, you know? That, well, you're down there right in the action and you know, the crowd's well, you going nuts and all that. Yeah. So you're looking for any advantage you can get. Now, uh, does it happen the opposite where you're sure that play is going to happen? Oh, listen, it, 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 it like way. I say, you know, uh, it could go uh, the other you way. You know, I, 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 I was off sides <laughs> against St. Louis. I think five times in a game because I knew it's, I thought I knew the snap count. You did. <laughs> 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 Coach kept yelling at me. He did? He said, what are you doing? And Who's I said, don't Chuck? worry, I'll, I'll work it out. <laughs> Chuck Knox got a little upset. You know, I came off the field. You know, yeah. He was looking for me. He was pacing down the sideline looking for me. He always looks so for you. I hid behind Merlin Olsen <laughs> to get off the field. <laughs> you know, but, but, but all of these things, you know, all of these things add up. Now, uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh. Great I, stories, I, I, by the way. Gives you some yeah. insight into football. Can you see that? You can't see it on TV. Or do you, when you watch TV now, as a, uh, a spectator of the game, kind of guess what the plays are going to be now? You cannot believe, and this isn't, to, you know, to, you know, to disparage anybody because they all do the best they can. It's just, what are you looking at? Yeah. I always ask people in life, whether, you know, you're on a corner here in front of a Starbucks or, or you're in a huddle someplace or you're standing all by yourself covering Charlie Joyner, I, I want to know, what are you looking at? It's critical. What you look at, and you have to learn on your own because coaches don't tell you. Right. Here's the key. Here's the tip off. Jack Reynolds, myself, uh, Jack Youngblood, Merlin Olson, uh, Jimmy Youngblood, all of the, all of our guys, all of our guys believe the same way, and we were always looking for tips. We were always, and we always had, we'd yell out things, you know, turkey trot. And that meant that, that, uh, you know, the fullback was cheated a half a step over. And that meant it was going to be a counter zero one hole play. What's a counter zero? Uh, it's too long to explain to you, but that's the fullback up the right. middle. Right. Okay. You know, so, so, so Jack Reynolds would, would instead of, he would close the distance that he usually stands behind the nose tackle, which okay. in this case was Larry Brooks. So he comes up a little bit. He comes up a little bit and slides. So the guard cannot get to him. When he releases, he has to kind of brush Larry. He has to kind of go around Larry to get to the middle linebacker. So Jack knows the blocking combinations, so he makes it difficult at the last minute to cheat up and tighten the space and cheat behind Larry and protect himself. And so when the ball is snapped, Larry slides right behind Larry, uh, right behind Larry Brooks in front of the guard and stuffs the play. That's great. That's yeah, great. That's great. It, 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 that's the type of stuff I miss. That is, and that would be the stuff I would miss too. And you guys would work on that yourselves on the uh, during well, the Well, we'd game. see it in the films. Yeah, you'd see it. So you'd yeah, talk you'd about it. Look what films. he does. Yeah. So you would watch the films of the opposing team before you get to well, them. Always. Always. Yeah, we'd lock, we watch a lot of films. Yeah. You know. But uh, anyway, what I want to do is, when we come back, i got to get into this uh, New England Patriots thing because this is a scandal waiting to pop. It's the PM Show Weekend Edition on Sports with the one and only Fred Dreyer from CRN. Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right. For you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right. In Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch... 
Remember their classic burger, the original double-deck hamburger combination. Delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous big boy special sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. Whether you're restoring a classic car, building a hot rod, or just bringing your daily driver back to like new condition, Steel Rubber Products is your choice for quality automotive rubber parts and weather stripping. As one of the world's award-winning custom car and hot rod builders, Bodie Stroud prefers to work directly with Steel Rubber Products on his award-winning project cars and show vehicles. In addition, Steel Rubber works with top builders like Bodie to confirm the fit and function of its parts as well as develop new products. So for rubber products that fit like the original, last a lifetime, and look like they should, you can't get a better product anywhere. If your dream ride sounds like this, contact Steel Rubber Products and enjoy a ride that sounds like this. Steel Rubber Products, a difference you can hear and quality you can see. Visit us on the web at www.steelrubber.com or call us at 800-447-0849. And remember, if you want the best, you want Steel Rubber Products. Homeowners, now is the season to be thinking about your roof because all it takes is one storm to turn a small roof problem into a major leak. If it's time for a new roof, call Sears at 888-465-9720. You can save $500 if you call right now. Sears licensed, fully insured contractors can get your roofing job done right. Just call 888-465-9720. Sears has a variety of shingles and styles that are built for long-lasting performance, and you'll save $500 if you call now. So call Sears for a free and home consultation at 888-465-9720. Hurry, offer ends soon. Not available in all areas. Installation provided by Sears Authorized Licensed Contractors. License information available upon request. That's Sears Roofing. Call right now and save $500. Call 888-465-9720. 888-465-9720. Call Sears now and get that roof repaired. Call 888-465-9720. The PM <laughs> Show, weekend edition on sports here from CRN Digital Talk Radio. Follow us at crntalk.com. You can email Fred, Fred Dreyer, D-R-Y-E-R, at crntalk.com. Follow him on Twitter, Fred underscore Dreyer, D-R-Y-E-R, and on Facebook.com forward slash the real Fred Dreyer. Plus, he's on Periscope a lot of times right before and doing some postings. But we got football news here, Fred Dreyer. What you got for us? Um, look. Uh, you know, as I told everybody that would uh, listen to the show, um, I told everybody that this uh, in deflate gate was a scam. I said it has no bearing on outcomes of games whatsoever. I said that this is going to be a uh, a, a, uh, um, a turkey shoot uh, because they, uh, the politic in the league, around the league, does not like Bill Belichick. They don't like the New England Patriots. They don't like the so-called culture of cheating. And they decided that uh, uh, Tom Brady paid somebody off, the ball boys or whoever it was, to deflate the balls so they could get an edge up in a championship game that they would win eight out of ten times anyway, that they would uh, they, they would cheat their way into the Super Bowl. And uh, they put this guy, Webb, from the league, and... Uh, and uh, he was do a do a uh, a study, an investigation, an yeah. investigation, yeah, of uh, just what the heck happened here. And it's just it's it's now, um, it's now a uh, f- almost a fait accompli that this his investigation is a joke. Talk about this guy Ted Wells, right? Ted the lawyer. Wells. He made a report. He's a lawyer. Wells, not Webb. Yeah, he's a, he's a lawyer, Ted Wells. Yeah, I want I want to read something. I don't like Pardon reading. It. I don't I, I don't like reading this stuff because it's kind of small print, you know. So bear with me. You know, uh, Tom Brady is said to be sinking sink, seeking 
total exoneration, and it appears he's entitled to it. The idea that Brady and the New England Patriots intentionally deflated footballs for a competitive advantage has been discredited by everyone from sidewalk chemists to web physicists to unlicensed ceramicists. (laughs) Not to mention your own common sense. But most importantly, it is utterly shredded in a new scientific analysis by the American Enterprise Institute, which shows the only inflation problem is in the NFL commissioner Roger Goodell's head. Well, you've got a problem with the NFL commissioner, haven't you? I, I do, and I have a, I have a, 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 a real big poli- a, 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 a problem with the politic that seems to have uh, seeped into the National Football League. And, and, uh, the way they do things by committee, there doesn't seem to be, and here it is, it's, it's autobiographical to what's going on here in our own culture, is that there is no leadership. And, uh, you know, true. Uh, you know, I can go back and, and point all this stuff out left and right about, uh, the Ray Rice deal, how that exploded, how, how people were w- with, with tangible evidence in front of them were unable to consummate that uh, narrative and that storyline and bring it to a swift, credible uh, uh, conclusion You're talking about the team is, itself is astronomical. Taking care me. of it themselves, right? The yeah, team. Yeah, or, or, yeah and, and at the same time, the league says, okay, now because there was so much pressure on it, and they're, and they're t- lying about the tape that was sent you know, to the front office, and nobody got it, and, but everybody else saw it except for the commissioner and all these people. And, uh, and so now what you wind up with is a, uh, is a commissioner who, uh, who is, uh, I, I don't want to say that he lies, but, but, uh, which they all do in, in that, in that position, uh, there is a degree of manipulation of the truth and a delaying of information that winds up being lies. And in, in this case, you've got a, a, a league that is clearly uh, in for and out for the the total uh, 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 attack on uh, the New England Patriots franchise, Bill Belichick specifically, Tom Brady, and the culture of cheating. Why don't they like Belichick? I like him. I think he's a good coach. Well, they do because he he tells the press he's not very good. He's as not a, intimidated by him. Well, he just tells them to get out of here. You know, yeah. we're not we're not talking to you today. And uh, he's not he he, he doesn't uh, doesn't go along. You know. And, and, but, but there's a lot of other things, you know, he, he was caught, supposedly, and that's a pejorative, but he was caught, the team was caught, you know, filming the opposing coach's signals. And, uh, and so, uh, and, and anybody that knows anything about George Allen or anybody else that knows about any other coach in the league knows that it, it, you want to be able to get a leg up on people. You're not, you're not breaking and entering. You know, they're, they're doing it right in front of you. You film them and you break it down you, and you, by a, a ratio sonation and, and by deduction, you figure out what the signals are. And that's what anybody does. That's what a quarterback does. That's what the safety is trying to do to the quarterback, trying to fool him. Is that cheating? So you, you can get into this whole machination of, uh, of exactly what it's like, you know, uh, uh, you know, to try and uh, play a football game nowadays and, and try to get past the politic of political correctness. And in this report, this is going to this is going to explode. This is going to show Roger Goodell and the league for what they really are. Located in the heart of Maui's premier resort, Kanapali Beach Hotel is officially recognized as Hawaii's most Hawaiian hotel and the number one best value in Hawaii. With a range of accommodations and affordable dining options, this is the ideal setting to turn Hawaiian dreams into lifelong memories. Live Hawaiian entertainment every evening, free year-round children's programs, weekly arts and crafts fairs, welcome breakfast, and departure kukui lei ceremonies add to the value. Swim in the whale-shaped pool, indulge in the fabulous spa and hotel salon. Enjoy Hawaiian hospitality at its best at the Ka'anapali Beach Hotel. Call 800-262-8450 or go to kbhmaui.com. That's kbhmaui.com. Aloha.
25 years ago, a few million people a year got a CT scan. Now 80 million do. But is it necessary? I'm Aileen Ellis. CT scans emit radiation, and according to Consumer Reports, researchers estimate that 2% of all future cancers in the U.S. may come from CT scans alone. So when is it the test to have? When you've got a head injury from a car crash, an undiagnosed abnormal neurological exam, weakness or tingling on one side of your body, and when a child loses consciousness. CT scans are also good for lung cancer screenings if you've smoked a pack of cigarettes a day for 30 years or to diagnose a pulmonary embolism, a potentially fatal clot. Some questions to ask your doctor. Why is this CT scan necessary? How will the results affect my treatment? What will happen if I skip it? And this final question, since I had a CT scan of that area recently, isn't that good enough? That's Primetime Focus brought to you by AARP. Are you nearing eligibility for Medicare benefits? Then you know now is an important time in your life. Medicare benefits can be a complicated puzzle. You don't want to overpay for your Medicare coverage or get the wrong plan. Let Health Markets Insurance Agency help you. With one free phone call, a licensed insurance agent will help you select a Medicare plan that's right for you and your budget. If you're becoming eligible for Medicare, call today and learn how to get the most out of your benefits. 800-793-1960. 800-793-1960. Health Markets Insurance Agency is the DBA or assumed name of InSphere Insurance Solutions, Inc., which is an authorized insurance agency in all 50 states in the District of Columbia. Not all agents are licensed to sell all products. Service and product availability varies by state. Call 800-793-1960. 800-793-1960. It's the end of quarter clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We're North America's largest specialty retailer of hardwood flooring, and we've got 10 million square feet of top quality floors for as much as 77% less than other stores. Get over 200 styles of real pre-finished hardwood from just 49 cents. 40 styles of beautiful bamboo from 159, plus deals on popular American and European laminates and more from an incredible 39 cents. And pay no interest until 2017. Hurry, clearance sales going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. The Doug Steffen Good Day program, early morning radio, and I guess it is radio, although it's radio on TV because this is CRN Digital Talk. You can find out what's going on in the world. We talk about the issues of the day, the events of the day, the people that people are talking about. We have an interesting way of looking at the news and having a little fun with the issues. So if you want to have some fun, learn a few things, and get up on the right side of the world, Doug Steffen's Good Day program, weekday mornings, 2 to 7 a.m. on CRN Digital Talk. It's the PM Show. Weekend edition on sports from CRN Digital Talk Radio. I'm Michael Horn along with our star of the show, the Sultan of Safeties, two safeties in one game, all pro defensive end, the acting superstar and legend, the one and only Hunter himself, Mr. Fred Dreyer. Thank you so very much. Welcome back to our show. This uh, There's more that we're going to uh, give you later on in the show about this Roger Goodell, Tom Brady suspension and the... Uh, and the and the report, the erroneous, uh, just erroneous report. Uh, but Goodell first, may be in trouble. But first, we we got to, first a great guest here. This is a buddy of mine, Carmen Policy. He uh, makes incredible wines. That's why I like him. I don't know if he's a I don't know if he's <laughs> well, a sports guy or anything at all. That, but that's exactly Casa what you're Piana, happy about. Casa Piana is one of the great Cabernets out of Napa Valley. Whatever else he does is secondary. But he, he does have a background, I believe, in the game of football, as you do, Fred Dreyer. And yes. he was instrumental with those 49er championships, and then he went to Cleveland for a while. And now he's been tapped to do this football deal in uh, maybe in Southern California. Carmen Policy, welcome to this, the show here. Oh, it's an honor to be on the show. First of all, you know, Mike, I love interacting with you and talking about wine, and and then it's also an honor to be with Fred Dreyer. I mean, oh, thank you talk you. about being involved with football. Well, he was involved with real football, where it really counts. On oh, the field. thank you, thank you so much, Carmen. We've not met, but I certainly know about you and your pedigree and your in your uh, in your uh, reputation and your character, and I, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to come on and tell us what the heck is going on here in L.A. with football. Well. It, I'll tell you, Fred and Mike, a lot's going on, and good. It's about time, actually. When you I stop agree. and think about I it, I agree. You're in the Northern California. You got two teams playing there all the time. We haven't had a team. We had the Raiders for a while, the Rams for a long time. Nothing for years. Carmen policy. 
20 years, and uh, you could al- almost argue 21 seasons, and you're the second largest market in the United States, but you are the number one entertainment center in Indeed, the world. Indeed, yes. Thank you. I didn't know you noticed, yes. but thank you, Carmen. Yeah, I mean, think about it for a moment. The NFL absolutely belonged there. We belong. We we belong there now, and we got to be there for the future. I, I don't care what anybody says. The ratings may be fine because people like football, and you get all kinds of different games that come into the market. But for generations to come, for the for the game to be appreciated and to grow, you've got to have a, a, a team or teams on the ground, and you have to have those young kids understanding, identifying, and and latching onto their team their home team. And I, I think that the, the NFL realizes that. Roger Goodell reals, realizes that. I, I'm convinced that Roger has returning to L.A. as part of his platform. Well, he's got a, he's got a busy uh, uh, constituency out there. You know, uh, he's got uh, 32 owners. You've got three teams that want to um, that come into this area. You've got to get a consensus. I guess 26 of the 32 have to agree. Is that right? 24. 24 uh, of the 32 have to uh, agree, and I, I think that uh, that's going to happen because I think the league, as you say, the, the collective teams, want a team out here. And uh, uh, there's got three teams, Raiders, Rams, and Chargers. Uh, all, all two of them are California teams. One was a California team. Uh, you've got a, a venue out there with Stan Kroenke in Inglewood next to the Forum. He's bought the land already he's and got wants the, to come yeah, out. Yeah, and he's got uh, plans and he's done all that stuff. And uh, he's got the Okie Doke from the city. and uh, and uh All his own money, right? Yeah, all of his own money. But, but Carmen so, here is re- representing another idea here. Well, yeah, but he, Carmen has, uh, I guess, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, busy with Carson, with the Raiders and the Chargers. Tell us about uh, what's going on over there. Well, it... it the Raiders and Chargers have closed on buying all the land in Carson. Wow. And mm. now we're dealing with a situation we never had before. And when I say we, I'm talking about the NFL. You have the the, the site in Inglewood uh, that's purchased and ready to go. Now you have the site in Carson that's purchased, totally entitled, and ready to go. Wow. And Great. you have a situation. Here's the dilemma that the league's facing. And, and it's a tough dilemma, like all dilemmas are, I guess. You have two teams out of the three in California, and those two teams, the Chargers and the Raiders, are playing in the oldest and worst facilities in the league. Both facilities in which these two teams play were designed for multi-sport activity, and one of them still does have baseball and football. Mm -hmm. They both predated Candlestick in terms of Candlesticks accommodating the 49ers. Think about that. Candlesticks dust, dust today. Yep, And so they have to solve what I call the California dilemma. Now, if you bring, if you bring a fourth team in, you just make the dilemma worse. What fourth what team? What fourth team? If you brought a fourth team in, in other words, if you did not bring both, the, both of the California teams to L.A., or even if you bring one of the California teams to L.A. and then a team from outside to L.A., now you got four teams in California. I see what you're saying. Four teams total in California. Total. Yeah, four teams total. You've just made the California dilemma worse. Oh, I see. You're, so counting, the, oh, I see. you're counting the 49ers. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, okay. I see what you mean. I'm sorry if I didn't make that oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. I, I, my, my, uh, my, uh, our math uh, was off a little bit. We yeah, didn't realize. Your math. It was your, your math. Your championship teams are on the 49ers. We forgot for a second, Carmen. We're sorry. But, Come on. Uh, there, you know, you have to remember, there is there is a part of California that's that's north of Santa Barbara. And it's got it's the good wine. Nice we know the place. It's got the it's got the NBA champs. Okay, we get it. We get it. It's got the Does World Fred Series drink champions. Wine, by the way, Does Fred, Fred like wine? I, 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 have, good I, wine. I like I like a good uh, cab. Is uh, it? Uh, no, <laughs> no. He, he likes ports. <laughs> I like ports. Well, we yeah, got to get you up here, Fred. I'm a Madeira <laughs> port. He's cigars and ports. That's his I, thing. I, I, I like that's cigars, and, and uh, that's a good combination. But that's uh, a very you know, good Mike. Mike has been very kind to me over the years in taking me to uh, some wine tasting things, and I've had a great time doing it. I just find it uh, kind of uh, 
you know, uh, uh, a stage weight for me to, you know, order a glass of wine with, with my, with my meal because I'm always in and out real fast, you know. Well, but yeah, okay. Got but it. getting back to this dilemma, I get what you're saying, Carmen Policy, is we have old stadiums. You're saying two teams need stadiums, need something new. And then if we bring in another team, now there's four teams in Southern California. Will that happen? You think there'll be four teams or just two? What do you think is going to happen? I, you know, you can't tell what the league's going to do, but I don't think it's wise to bring a fourth team to California without solving the, 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 the California dilemma. And the California dilemma involves two of the three teams that are presently here now. So then you look to the next issue. What about accessibility? Everybody tells me that, that L.A. is all about accessibility, getting from point A to point B in the least amount of time. And I think Carson offers that, that central location right on two freeways. As a matter of fact, one of the freeways, the 405, has an exit ramp that dumps right into the Carson site. I think you have a lot of parking there. You don't have to worry about tailgating. You don't have to worry about where do you accommodate the people coming and, and where, how do you accommodate those people parking and how do you accommodate those people leaving. All right, hang on so just a second. Carbon Policy is with us here. We're going to wrap this up straight ahead here on the PM Show on Sports Weekend Edition. Fred Dreyer, Michael Horn, CRN. What would an extra $250 a month mean to you? For some, it's a little financial breathing room. For others, it's a car payment, a home repair, or help with college tuition. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, president of Quicken Loans, and I've got some great news if you're looking to save money on your mortgage. All it takes is a simple phone call to Quicken Loans at 800-QUICKEN to see if you qualify for the government's Home Affordable Refinance Program, or HARP. Folks who refinance with HARP can save an average of $250 a month. That's $3,000 a year. Our home loan experts fully understand the HARP guidelines, and they'll walk you through our streamlined process. And for five years in a row now, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. And this year, for the first time, they've also ranked us highest in mortgage servicing. Call 800-QUICKEN or visit quickenloans.com. Visit jdpower.com for award information. Important terms and conditions apply. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender. License law 50 states and home last number 3030. It's the end of quarter clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We're North America's largest specialty retailer of hardwood flooring. And we've got 10 million square feet of top quality floors for as much as 77% less than other stores. Get over 200 styles of real pre-finished hardwood from just 49 cents. 40 styles of beautiful bamboo from 159. Plus deals on popular American and European laminates and more from an incredible 39 cents. And pay no interest in until 2017. Hurry, clearance sales going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Bunnies in the garden. Yeah, rabbits are cute. Squirrels too. Till they ruin your garden, feasting on your plants. Get yourself some Ortho Animal Be Gone. Animal Be Gone uses ingredients that little critters are naturally repelled by. But it won't hurt them. And the no-stink formula works without smelling horrible. Animal Be Gone from Ortho. We don't hurt them. We just chase them. Guaranteed. Learn more about how Animal Be Gone lives up to its name at ortho.com. Use only as directed. Welcome back to the PM Show on Sports Weekend Edition, CRN Digital Talk Radio. I'm Michael Horn. Fred Dreyer, the Sultan of Safety, yes. the uh, acting legend and the sports uh, football legend superstar. And our guest is Carmen Policy. Carmen was at the 49ers during all their winning seasons and then uh, spent a few years with the Cleveland Browns putting that whole uh, dream uh, situation back together. And now he's uh, working on getting football into Los Angeles. He's also a wine grower. He makes great Casa Piena wine and a cohort of his. Garen Staglin was at the auction Napa Valley. And I said, Garen, I said, Carmen is uh, working away on all these things over there. I said, well, why is he working so hard? And he said, well, he's a little upset that he wasn't able to get the uh, sports editor's job for the Yonville Sun. <laughs> <laughs> and so thus, and that is what he told me, Carmen Policy. Oh. I am repeating it. I didn't realize you were out to be the, <laughs> the sports editor of the Yonville Sun. But we're glad you're trying to bring football to Los Angeles. So where are we on this? You said uh, Carson's got the freeway uh, off-ramp access, all that kind of stuff. You say there's a dilemma because there's uh, two teams now, Oakland and uh, San Diego, want to come to Carson, uh, and the land is now purchased. Just, uh, uh, the uh, the Rams Cranky, from Cronky. St. Louis, Stan Kroenke, has bought the land ready to go in Inglewood. Now there'd be four teams in L.A., two of those teams, Oakland, uh, San Diego, need new stadiums. What's going to go on? Well, I, and again, I, I refer to that as the California dilemma, and, and it's 
it's a it's a problem that the league has to solve. And I think they have to pay attention to California and the California teams first as they deal with how they're going to enter L.A. So part of the problem, of course, is two different approaches. And the Carson approach is wide open, access, a land that's totally available for an NFL experience. And this is going to be an open-air stadium. It's going to be all about Southern California, the L.A. field that we're, we're going to an event and we want to be outdoors. The tailgating is going to be extra special. It's going to be the best in the NFL. What about, the nat- also- what about natural grass, Carmen? Yes, it'll have natural grass please, as well. Please, yes. Get yeah, well, you know, Fred, stuff. that's the other thing, too, because, you, you know, you, you, you know uh, uh, having an open-air stadium allows you to have the natural grass, whereas yep. the other alternative doesn't. No, I, I understand. I, yeah, I do understand. Does but, the Cronky Stadium, is that going to be a closed stadium? No, no, it, no, it's going to be open. It's going to be open, too. Okay, gotcha. No, yeah. no, it's going to be closed. Oh, it is going to be closed. Okay. Carmen, yeah. let me ask you, you know, before we move on here, L- let me ask you a question. We've got San Francisco, we've got Oakland, we've got the Raiders, and we have the potential Rams. I mean, the Car- Chargers and Rams. That's four teams in California. Right. Three, three of them are proposed to be in L.A. They, now, uh, uh, a friend of mine in San Diego said it looks as though to him he thinks that San Diego at the very last minute is going to pull a stadium out and Chargers would not move up here. And and uh, what do you what do you hear about the Chargers and a stadium down there? Well, I all right. So let me try to address this uh, as as the best I can. Number one, the league said it will only support one stadium in Los Angeles. Interesting. I don't think there's any chance during several of, uh, or several generations of lifetime that there will be three teams in L.A. just won't happen. The most that will happen is two, because they've always talked yeah. about two teams in L.A. Yeah. And L.A. is on a growth pattern. So the league is definitely planning one way or another to have two teams there, in my opinion. Then what you have is the situation relative to the home markets. And I have to tell you, uh, uh, when I came on, my my deal was that I wouldn't have to address the home markets. I wouldn't address the home markets. But if you read the paper, I think, uh, and when I say the paper, I should say the print media as well as some of the other media, you're going to see that it it, it just doesn't look like uh, there's going to be anything to step in the way of either the Raiders or the Chargers from following through with their commitment to Carson. What about the Rams? other than the league? What other about the, the what league? about the Rams? I mean, they have a. How are you going to keep Cronky out of here when he's on a on a year to year in St. Louis and they have completely botched their relationship with everybody? Well, let, my 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 position is this: no one goes to L.A. without the league's approval. So who, well, they, you they told cannot... that to, they told that to Al Davis too. But those, though, that was twenty uh, what twenty five years ago. Right. Since then, the the the, the courts have changed hmm. the complexion of their rulings, and the league has stepped up, and it's taken a, a whole different approach to how teams relocate. And I don't think any team wants to fight the NFL on the on the LA market. I know this. Uh, I, I I would I would be very shocked. Uh, to, he- to hear that uh, there was any thought in the, in the back of either the Chargers' minds or the Raiders' minds to fight the league's decision, they're 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 based. They've spent a lot of money at Carson. They've spent. Uh, I mean, in all honesty, they've spent a small fortune there already in buying the land and the planning and so forth and so on. Well, let me but, ask you. Okay, let, excuse me, but let me let me just. Um, everybody keeps associating the Chargers and the Raiders in Carson and Cronky and Inglewood. Is there a chance that Cronky could be in Carson with the Ra- with one of the two Raiders or the Chargers? Well, Good you know, question. Fred, I, that's an interesting question. <laughs> and it, we it, should it, say it, Carmen is representing the yeah. Uh, no, the Raiders I, no, that's in, why in I asked him. I but mean, yeah, but would, that's an interesting uh, question. What do you think? But it's a very interesting question, and it's, it's one I've dealt with personally. And I I understand what you're saying, and he's making a very valid point. What happens if the league says hold it? Okay, we're going to L.A. Carson is a better site by far for an L.A. franchise in Southern California dealing with strictly the NFL. We're talking about the NFL, and you're not worried about concerts and special events and Madonna and all that stuff. It's the best spot. Now, we want to have that spot, but we're going to pick 
which teams go there. I mean, can that happen? I guess they can introduce that kind of a compromise into the mix. I don't know if it could ever come when across. When will we, because, Carmen Posse, when will we know? When do you think we'll have information? I think you'll know by December. I like Ooh, this. Ooh, I like this. Carmen Posse, we love you. We want you back here on the show as things heat up, and it sounds like they're getting warm already. And get Fred Dreyer up to the Napa Valley. We're, I'm on my way right now. Thanks, Carmen. He's got Carmen. a cigar. You supply the port. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you, Carmen. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a non organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Six one eight. Are you worried about losing your home to foreclosure? If you've been threatened with foreclosure or receive legal papers from your bank, you have approximately 30 days to respond. If you do not respond, you could lose your home. You have rights. Act now to protect your rights. You can stay in your home. Many times you can even modify your loan. The bottom line is you can get past this, but you must act right now. If you've been served by your bank and you're worried about losing your home to foreclosure, now is the time to fight back and save your home. Time is limited, so call the professionals at National Foreclosure Defense right now. 800-515-6309. 800-515-6309. 800-515-6309. 800-515-6309. That number again is 800-515-6309. CRN Travelers, relax at the beautiful Fountain Grove Inn and Conference Center in Santa Rosa, California. Come to quality and come to luxury. Experience the newly renovated guest rooms. They're generously sized and they're decorated in the Tuscan tradition. They have great, incredible pillow top mattresses, luxurious linens and down fill comforters. The Fountain Grove Inn also offers complimentary Wi-Fi and internet access. There's warm cookies and coffee every evening in the hotel lobby, and you can visit the newly remodeled Equus Restaurant and Equus Lounge with its new wine bar. It's the ideal place to relax and enjoy a glass of wine and watch our What's Cooking on Wine show on CRN with host Larry Van Alst on Wednesdays. It's the Fountain Grove Inn Hotel and Conference Center located in the heart of Sonoma Wine Country. It's easily located in Santa Rosa off the 101 Fountain Grove Parkway exit. Call 707-578-6101. That's 707-578-6101 or visit FountainGroveInn.com. What a show. It's flying by here. The PM yeah. Show on Sports really Weekend is. Edition. Michael Horn along with Fred Dreyer. Yeah. Carmen Policy was our guest. He's representing the uh, the Oakland Raiders and the San Diego Chargers in a move to bring them to Carson, California in the NFL. And uh, that would leave one NFL team, uh, NFC guys, the uh, 49ers in San Francisco. And here's my question for you, Fred. You know, uh, St. Louis wants to come. They're part of the NFC. You'd have two AFC teams in Southern California. Don't you want to have two teams want to have one from the NFC and one from the AFC? Well, you would. You would think so. That, that's why I asked Carmen, you know, what if the, what if the Rams, what if the league says, look, there's going to be one stadium. We will take two teams out of the three. We're not taking three. Three are, three are eligible. Right. Okay. So who's it going to be? Well, the Rams have a very good uh, argument because they were here before. I think the league the is... Longest. They the, were in the, the, the longest. Well, they, yes, they were. The Chargers were here in 60 yeah, for a year. For a year. And and so so I think it, sh- I think it should be either uh, the Rams and pick one of the two, Raiders or, or Chargers. 
And, and so if it's Rams and Chargers, I like that a lot because it, it reunites the Rams and the Chargers a long time ago. Right. I was a, a freshman in high school and the Chargers came out. And Sid Gilman was the coach. They played one year at the Coliseum. Loved their uniforms. They screwed them up, you know, when they went down south. So the Padres. But, but, but yeah, but the point is, is that, is that if, if, uh, Stan Kroenke says, you know, he initially made the move to buy the land to create this movement to the stadium. Was that because he wanted a better deal in St. Louis or because he was serious about going to uh, Inglewood? Well, I had a lot of people upset that the Rams left Los Angeles to begin with. I mean, that's kind of like the – I know they were in Cleveland for a while, but I mean – No, it has nothing to do with it. But but people people were very upset in the league that the Rams left. So the league Be- was upset. But here's the reason why. They didn't get L.A. Marcus. They have 32 teams in the league. Right. Everybody wants every team to be strong in, right. in their market. It's good for business. But when the Rams and this woman, this Georgia, Georgia. Frontieri, yeah. when this woman, you know, through this delirium, decided to move the Rams back to, to St. Louis from her hometown because she felt as though she was had to, she had to get away from the press because she was incompetent and they were beating the hell out of her. So she moves the team back there and it lowered the franchise. It lowered the value of the Rams. It, it left this market empty. That's a huge divot that people didn't like. Right. So now that they got Stan Kroenke told the city of St. Louis a couple of years ago, you better put together a good stadium plan and upgrade the stadium. They said, we have no intention of doing it. We're going to let the contract lapse. So they let it lapse. So he says, okay, I'm going back out to L.A. to Inglewood. I'm going to buy some land. I'm going to put a, a venue out there, and I'm going to move back. And so now St. Louis is running around like all these bureaucrats do when they realize they screwed up and they lose all this tax base by having this franchise leave to go back to L.A. And so now uh, they have uh, proposed a stadium on the river uh, under the arch. And now they want the Rams to come back and they're going to make everything nice. Now, I don't know if Stan Kroenke, Kroenke has done all of this. To, to get a better deal, or if he's serious about saying, I'm moving anyway. Now, if he's, if he's, uh, sold on moving, the league could come in and say to him, we're not using your property. They could if, say if, that. If, if you want to move, then you're one of the teams that are coming to go Carson. The stadium, the other. That means we have, the league now has to decide which of the t- two, Chargers or Raiders, gets to share the, the stadium with an NFC team. And that is go. yet to be decided, but I think it's going to be. Who wants to? I think it's going to be that way. Why would the Rams stay in St. Louis if they're down by the river? I mean, no one is in a van down by the river. You want to lose a lot of weight? Play, uh, play in the summertime in St. Louis. Oh, boy, that's true. All right, that's our show. If you missed anything, log on to the website at crntalk.com forward slash the real Fred Dreyer and check out what's going on here on our show on the uh, PM show with Fred Dreyer. You can download our cell phone app. It's absolutely free. Just dial pound 250, hit yeah, send, please do. and then say CRN Talk. It'll be loaded up to your phone. And we're here every day. Follow Fred on Twitter, Fred underscore Dreyer on Facebook, Facebook.com, the real Fred Dreyer, and Fred Dreyer at CRNTalk.com. You know something, folks? There's so much left to talk about. I've got a desk full of stuff. We'll see you next time. CRN Digital Talk Radio prides itself on being the station of every situation. And you can listen to us on nearly any...